Are you a good phone? Here are some results from the web. <sighs> It's been about three years since the Pixel 2 has been released, and I've had mine for about a year and a half. How has the Pixel 2 held up after almost 18 months of ownership? Inside the Pixel 2 is an 8-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 processor with an Adreno 540, 4GB of RAM, 64GB of storage, and a 2700mAh battery. I bought my phone for $700, including tax, June of 2018. It has always had a glass screen protector in this thin plastic case since the day I got it. The speaking case has worn in nicely and now has a kind of soft touch plastic feel. Thankfully, this simple black plastic case has allowed my phone to survive some surprisingly high drops, which I will not replicate. Yeah, the screen protector has been cracked, but I'm too lazy to replace it. The power button is as clicky as the day I got it, but the same can't be said about the volume rocker, which has gotten quite weak over time. While it hasn't tried to fall out yet, it is kind of annoying. The water resistance is still an IP67 rating, which means it can go down to about 3 feet of water for up to 30 minutes. I smacked my phone into a bathroom sink with the water on, and it still works, though I have not dared to test it again. The fingerprint reader is just as fast and accurate as day one, which is good. But because it is on the back of the phone, it is a little less convenient trying to unlock your phone when it's sitting flat on a table. The Google Assistant was one of the biggest deals about the Pixel 2 when it was launched. You squeeze the sides of the phone and you will trigger the Google Assistant. You can change the amount of force you need to apply to the phone within the settings, which can range from a gentle touch to barely being able to trigger, squeezing with all your might. The Assistant is quite good, allowing you to set alarms, reminders, and even play music without touching the phone. The Assistant does a lot more things, but those three are the main things that I use it for. A few months ago, however, the reminders I set just stopped happening. I didn't realize at first, but then I started to forget things that the phone was supposed to remind me to do. At which point I realized something was wrong, I fixed the problem by checking the reminders box on my Google Calendar. Now the reminders have started to show up again. Recently, I was curious as to what other languages you can talk to the assistant with. I haven't checked since I got the phone. Now there's Chinese. It works really well and I can use both English and Chinese depending on how I'm feeling. Unfortunately, you can't use both at the same time. The phone will get confused if you don't use full English sentences or full Chinese sentences. Covered in Gorilla Glass 5, the Pixel 2 has a 5-inch AMOLED 1080p 60Hz display. While there are high refresh rate panels and 1440p nowadays, the display is still good enough for me. In settings, you can adjust the saturation, and I have mine on saturated, as the other two settings seem a little dull. No burn-in that I can see, overall the display shows no major problems. There's a green tint if you look at the phone from extreme angles, but not a huge problem honestly because you never look at your phone like this. But if you do, well, don't get the Pixel 2. Even outdoors, you can still see the display when it's on maximum brightness. On the subject of display, if you go into the About Phone tab and click Build Number multiple times, you enable Developer Settings. Ignore everything and just go down to the tab that says Animation Speed. If you change all of them to 0.5x, it makes your phone feel faster. The animations for the movements are shortened, which I really like the feel of. Or if you're weird, you can slow everything down. I don't know why you would do that, but... You can. You can also change the theme in settings, along with the app icon shapes if you don't like the default. Mine is on Squircle. In settings, you can also change the highlight color, icon styles, and font of the OS. Speaking of which, Google has kept updates coming on the Pixel 2, with the version at the time of this video being Android 10. It's a clean version of the software with no bloatware. Only a few useful Google apps like Gmail are pre-installed. My favorite feature in this update is dark mode. As the screen is AMOLED, it benefits from dark wallpapers and app backgrounds. Here's a Geekbench score for my Pixel 2. I've never really used benchmarks. I just did this benchmarks for the sake of benchmarking. Other than that, I've never really noticed lag in day-to-day -day use. But sometimes when I play YouTube on 2x speed now, it drops frames. On day one it was really smooth, but the likely suspect of this is that the battery is just getting old. Speaking of which, battery life is still about one full day. Sometimes if I have a busy day and don't really use my phone that much, the battery ends the day with about 40% left, allowing me to get through the night with some charge in the morning if I don't feel like plugging it in. Overnight, the phone drops about 5-10% to charge, and throughout the day even on high auto brightness, all connections enabled, and taking lots of pictures and videos, the phone rarely dies before I go to bed. But it's been getting closer lately, ending the day with less than 10% as I go to bed. Even if the phone dies though, the included fast charger gets the phone back to about 50% in 45 minutes, and gets to 100% in about an hour and a half. In my experience, the Pixel 2 camera still holds up today, especially for pictures, and you can now shoot in RAW if you feel like editing your pictures. However, if you don't feel like editing, the pictures still look good.
camera is still fast to launch with a double click of the power button, if not a few milliseconds lower than day one. While only having two measly lenses compared to the four, five, even six lenses of other phones today, I think that the single 8 megapixel front camera and 12.2 megapixel back camera is adequate. Autofocus is quick, but misses on the rare occasion. Even though the Pixel 2 camera is not as good as a dedicated camera for video, it's still usable. Autofocus while recording video is quite bad sometimes, but a tap on the screen usually fixes it. Stabilization is really impressive and doesn't warp the footage to do so. The back camera can record up to 4K 30fps, 1080p at 30fps, 1080p at 60fps, and 1080p 120fps. Even though it can do 720p at 240fps, the quality isn't that great when you reach that high of a frame rate. Selfie camera is good, but not very wide and can only record video at 1080p to 30fps. Wi-Fi is fast and so is data, well, depending on where you are. Bluetooth has no problems connecting to cars, speakers, and headphones. GPS is also accurate. On the bottom of the phone, you'll find one USB-C port. It's holding up alright, I suppose. It's a little more wiggly than I would like with non-factory chargers, but hey, it's not like I charge my phone when I'm awake that often. There's no headphone jack, and included is this dongle, but it is mildly inconvenient sometimes. I can't use any 3.5mm devices without this dongle, and I've almost lost it many times. This dongle usually lives on my earbuds or in this little bag that came with my camera strap. For the times I do need to connect to an aux cable in a car without Bluetooth, I need to remember to bring my dongle or I have to listen to the music through my phone, which don't get me wrong sound really good. While the two front facing speakers are lacking in a little bit of bass, mids and highs sound clear. The speakers are stereo, however the top one is not as loud as the bottom one, as it is just a repurposed earpiece for taking calls. These are the equalizer settings I have my phone set to. The stereo effect is not super obvious because of how close the speakers are to each other, but it does make the final sound a bit louder. Yeah, the Pixel 2 is getting a little dated. It does miss out on some new features like a second rear camera or a 90Hz screen. But for now, I don't think that the new phones today are that much better to warrant an upgrade. I still really enjoy my Pixel 2. While it isn't perfect with its loose volume rocker, lack of headphone jack, and aging 1080p display resolution, I have no regrets using it as my daily driver the past 18 months and will continue to do so until further notice.